Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me for this short practice for the hips and the low back. You're gonna want a belt and a block for this and we're gonna start lying down. So you'll want both of those next to you. And then you're gonna just get yourself comfortable on your back. And we're gonna start with the block. So what you'll do is you'll take the block and you'll put it in between your legs the skinniest way. You'll squeeze it at your knees. You're gonna walk your feet together and somewhat close to your hips. And then you're just gonna give a gentle squeeze to the block and you're gonna to start to rock your legs from side to side. So as you move your legs from side to side, you're gonna to start to push back with your upper arms, with your shoulders. So you're keeping some stability in your upper body while you move the lower body. Just a little gentle squeeze on the brick, knees rocking side to side, not a huge movement, but definitely letting one side of the pelvis lift while the other side is down. And then slow it on down. One small adjustment, we're going to take the block and we're going to put it the widest way in between the legs. So again, kind of, I like it more on the thigh side of the knee, still the feet together, still the heels close to the pelvis, squeeze. So now squeeze and hold for three, two, one, relax slightly the effort. And now squeeze again, pause here. So we're turning on the legs and we're turning on the stability of the connection of legs to pelvis. So you're gonna start to rock again, same action as before, little press back in the shoulders, keep the upper body stable, while the lower body tips the hips from side to side. Just kind of loosening up the spine, down low, and bringing some engagement to the legs. Inner leg squeezing so you don't drop the block. Maybe 10 passes back and forth. Just one more time. And then back to center. Pause. Let's take the block and bring the block to the hands now. So just make sure that you have room to take your arms overhead without running into anything. It's gonna be the wide way between your hands. You're gonna place your palms and fingers on it so that you're not holding with your fingers as much as you're squeezing. So take the arms right up above the chest, squeeze with palms flat, sink your waist toward the floor, tone in your belly, and then reach your arms overhead, only so far that you don't let your belly lift or your back lift off the ground and then back up. So we're gonna do just a few passes here. So even though most of this practice is gonna be for the lower body, we're just gonna include a little bit of the arms so we get a full experience here. So maybe, oh, three more times, something like five total where you're toning your belly, squeezing the block and moving the arms as one. So you're working and you're moving at the same time. Now the last time that you have the arms in that extended overhead position, pause, lock the belly toward the floor, belly toward spine, spine toward floor, breathe into the side ribs, expanding the waist right to left instead of up. And then place your block to the side. So a lot of times these areas outer hips, inner thighs, they're on the weaker side. And I notice for myself for sure, but many people that this contributes to back pain, hip pain, etc. So we're gonna continue with the strengthening. We're gonna take a belt around the upper legs. We're gonna wrap it around. If you have a really long belt, you might have to wrap it twice like I do, mine's eight feet, it's pretty big. And you're gonna bring it so that the knees are a little bit apart, not too much closer than when the block was between them. And then you're gonna put your feet back on the floor, same as before. So in this one, you're gonna keep holding the tail ends of the belt with your hands, and you're just gonna put your elbows on the floor. So as you put your elbows down, you can pull slightly on the tips of the belt or the ends of the belt away from the legs. You're creating tension around your knees with the belt. You're gonna push your knees out into that, that tension. So right now, there's a lot of work happening. You should see my arm muscles are engaging because I'm pulling on the tail of the belt and I'm pushing my knees into that belt. 
and it's really firing the outer hips and the outer thighs. And then again, I'm gonna relax and rest. You feel like you're doing a lot when you do that. It's all this like outer hip area and down the outer legs. Again, the reason is to help minimize back pain. When this area is weak, the back tends to hurt for most people. So let's do that one more time. We're gonna push the elbows down. We're gonna pull the tails of the, the belt away from the legs to tighten the belt. And then the legs, the knees are pushing out into the belt at the same time. Feet are on the floor, knees are pushing out, hands are pulling on the belt, rolling the shoulders back. If this feels easy for you, you can hold it longer. You could even start to lift your hips a little bit, still pushing the knees apart as the buns come off the ground. You should really feel the middle of your outer butt cheek working when you're doing this. And then put the butt back down, relax the hands, drop the tail of the belt, unhook the belt from your legs, just careful not to smash yourself in the face with your belt buckle. And then just put that to the side. Pause and just see how you feel. You should feel that there's some, some things happening already that are awake in the legs. And then we're gonna do one more thing here. We're gonna pick up both knees and we're gonna push the hands forward into the knees and the knees back into the hands. So as you push together, lock your waist down toward the floor, tone your belly, push, 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 hand the knees together, three, two, one release we're going to do that again so we're turning on the core and we're using the legs to help with that so try to match the effort now tops of the thighs by the knees hands are going to push away there knees are going to push back the two working together at the same time lock your waist to the floor keep pushing strong and firm both legs push in hard you can hear the effort in my voice push 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 three two one Release. Take your hands to the fronts of your shins. Push your knees into your hands. Pull your hands back into your knees. So you're going the opposite way now. You're pushing the knees away, pulling in with your arms. Just hold that. One more breath. And now pick up your head, round your back. Tuck your belly in. Start to rock until you can sit all the way up. As we sit here, we're gonna drop one leg down, and then the other one, we're gonna see if we can put that foot on top. So for a lot of people, if you're tighter in the hips, the knee will be kind of upright like this. If this is really difficult for you, you could pop this whole thing up so that you're sitting in a chair and still having that cross knee position. So first, the knee is gonna go down toward the floor. I'm fairly limber in this direction, so my knee goes pretty far down, but I'm just gonna let it go toward the floor. I'm gonna kind of actively push that outer knee down. And then I'm gonna bring my knee up. I'm gonna pull with my hands and continuously try to steer my knee toward the sky. So I'm working a little bit to stretch here on this outer hip now. And we're gonna do that one more time on this leg. So the knee is gonna go down. Again, you could do this with the bottom leg straight or sitting in a chair. Press your knee, your outer thigh down toward the floor. So that's strengthening a little bit that same area of the outer hip that we need to work. And then we're gonna pull the leg up, use the hands to assist. So this is not a twist. That's, we're, just, we're not doing that version. We're just pulling the knee upright trying to sit really alert and upright with the spine as well, and seeing if we can get some stretch in the outer hip. And then release. Do the other leg. I'm just gonna to turn to the side for this one. You get a different view. So one ankle is on top of the other knee. Maybe that leg is straight if that's easier for you, or perhaps you're sitting in a chair. Step one, let the knee go down and then actively try to press it down, so toward the floor. Push down with your whole outer leg, and then pull up. 
Use your hands to assist. Pull the knee into an upright position so you're not really changing the shape of your pelvis. You're not turning your spine. You're not twisting. You're just moving the thigh in the socket. And then knee down. And do each one one more time. So push down. You can even push your foot into your outer knee. Push your thigh toward the floor. Kind of maintain active pressure there. And then pull the knee up. Use your hands to assist. So I wanted to just target this part of the body because I think everyone talks about having tight hips, but I think really they're weak. I think what's really going on is that we don't strengthen there very much, especially if you sit a lot, which let's face it, most of us do. That area is not working. So we're strengthening it and trying to bring some stability to the pelvis and the low back. All right, let that go. You're gonna uncross your legs. You're gonna grab your block and bring that with you as you stand up. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna put mine in there for a second while I fix my hair. Part of why we're working on this, like I said, is to strengthen the outer hips and that's gonna minimize some challenges with the low back. It's also gonna stabilize your sacroiliac joint or your pelvis. And I find that that just helps with my neck too. Everything that stacks above it will kind of balance. So across the back of your body, there's this kind of diagonal connection from your lats, the pull row muscles on one side, they hook down into the low back area behind the sacrum. And then on the other side, you have the glute or butt muscles and they kind of connect up from the bottom to the sacrum. And it just connects kind of diagonally like two X's, one on each side across the pelvis. So the next thing that we're gonna do is gonna strengthen that diagonal chain. We're gonna use the block right now just for balance. And soon after that, we're gonna use it as like an actual movement. So right now, we're just gonna hold it wherever it helps us to balance. Let's stand on the right leg and bring the left foot wherever is comfortable for you to hold it. Squat, a mini squat, right leg, stand. Same leg, just working on your balance. Simply bending and straightening your knee while on the right side will start to wake up that same area that you were waking up before when you were lying down on the back. Okay, switch to the other leg. Left leg is standing, right leg is doing whatever it needs to do for balance, so is the block in the hands. And then you're gonna bend and straighten your left leg. And you might notice right away that one leg <laughs> struggles with this and one leg doesn't. Now in my experience, the one that struggles is the one that's weaker in the glutes, possibly tighter and weaker, not sure. So it's a couple times seeing how you can balance and do like mini pulses of bending and straightening that leg. Okay. Both feet on the floor now hinge at your hips. So what you're doing is keeping a long spine and tipping forward with your torso. And at the same time, you're going to bend your knees. You're going to put the block in your right hand, dangle that arm down. The other hand can go on your thigh or your hip. You're going to pull your shoulder onto your, ba your back, and then you're going to bend and straighten your arm. So you're not letting your arm wrap forward. You're trying to pull your shoulder blade onto your back, keep it there, and then lift and lower the block. So you're strengthening the back of your body, low back and hips for sure, back of your arm and shoulder blade too, that lat muscle. Okay, now that you've gotten the sense for that, stand, switch the block over, the hips go back in space, the chest goes forward, the spine is straight, and you bend your knees. Right hand for support somewhere, left hand dangles with the block, but you pull the shoulder onto your back. And then you're gonna bend and straighten your left arm to pull the block up as if you're gonna put it right alongside your ribs. So this strengthens not only your back, but your triceps, the back of your upper arm but you're really doing the whole back of your body. Imagine that you could screw your feet apart from each other, right toes twisting to the right, left foot twisting to the left, still working those outer legs. 
and then you stand. And now we're gonna put those two pieces together, the leg bending and the arm movement at the same time. So whatever leg you're on, it's gonna be the opposite arm that's holding the block, yeah? Standing on one leg, other arm is holding the block. So let's do right foot, left hand. Same essential shape with the torso. Dangle the block, put your shoulder on your back. Right now I have my left foot on the floor staggered behind my right as a little tripod balance point. Just to get the shape of this, we would bend both, straighten both. Bend both, knee and elbow, straighten both. Now, if this is easy and you really wanna work on toning that outer right hip and that diagonal sling across that outer side of your left upper back, then balance. Left foot off the floor, pick up the block, bend your standing leg. Straighten the leg, block goes down. So see if you can do this maybe two or three more times. Now the next one, when you're in that hover, that bend, you're gonna step your left foot back, way, way back, tippy toes on the floor, turn that heel to the ground, but keep your hips pointing mostly forward, squeeze the block between your hands like we did earlier, and send the block overhead. So this is warrior one. It might be a shorter stance from front to back than normal. That's fine, don't worry about it. Squeeze the block, raise the arms, raise the gaze. That right knee, push it slightly to the right. Try to keep those outer right hip muscles turned on, even if it's higher than normal, that's okay. Big breath in, and then you're gonna come on out <laughs> and step forward to the front of your mat. And just pause. So common yoga pose that causes pain for a lot of people, warrior one. For years, this pose killed my back. It just killed my back so much until I learned how to turn some of these other muscles on. So that's kind of the purpose today. Working in the core in a different way so we have less pain. Hold the block with your right hand. Stagger right foot behind left. So the left leg is gonna be the main weight bearing leg. And we're gonna begin with the back foot on the floor. So you're hinging the chest forward, long spine, and then you're gonna bend your standing leg and at the same time, you're gonna pull the block up next to your ribs on the right. You're straightening your leg and lowering the block at the same time. So try that a few times with the right foot on the floor. Torso is basically staying the same the whole time. And then maybe you give it a go without that back foot for balance. So if you're on the wobbly side, this is my wobbly side, you might have to concentrate a lot harder on slow controlled movements, pushing that left knee out to the left, so really keep the outer left hip strong. Now the next time you're in that little mini squat with the, the brick up by your ribs, Reach your right foot back. You might have to do a few steps to get it there. Put the heel toward the floor, pointing the hips mostly forward. They're gonna to turn to the right a little. Grab the block the wide way, palms press, squeeze the block, lift the block overhead. Tone your belly some, press the left knee to the left. It's okay if you're higher than normal in your warrior one. Lift the gaze. Keep squeezing the block gently. Keep pushing the left knee to the left. Feel how that big stretch on the whole front of your right side is opening your up, you up. Nice big full breath in. Side ribs expanding, not so much belly forward. And then you're gonna drop the block down in front of your chest. Step forward with both feet. Pause and just stand on your legs. You can put your block down and just see how you feel enlivened, energized, right? So let's take this to the floor once more. We're gonna inhale the arms overhead. Imagine the block there between your palms. Send your hips back, push your knees apart as you squat into chair pose. So the feet are apart, the knees are apart. Deep squat. 
like you're turning the left foot to the left and the right foot to the right to really strengthen the outer hips. And then you're going to exhale, fold forward, legs go straighter, hands find the ground. Forward fold. Inhale, lengthen your spine. You can climb your hands to your shins if that's helpful. And on the exhale, step yourself back into downward facing dog. Two more breaths. Just feeling how your dog pose might feel different compared to when you haven't done those strengthening, wakening exercises first. And then exhale and put your knees down. Open the knees, point the toes, come into child's pose. And just try to slow your breath down. And pick up your head, swing your feet forward, and decide if you'd like to finish this practice sitting or lying down. Either way, it's just a little transition moment to calm your mind, to see how it feels to be in your body now, to integrate what you felt and feel through this practice of strengthening around the legs, hips, pelvis, and low back. 